Right, this particular article and video for change isn't about the ring or the skull. It's about something I've been doing for a long time that seems to be coming to a culmination to an extent. It's about a new rock that's just was sent to us by Callan and Priscilla. And it was interesting because I've spoken to Callan on the phone and Evan's been in contact with them too. They sent it to us and they had a really, really strong attachment to it. And it had actually affected them deeply in a spiritual and, and sort of personal sense. And they felt that, that they could attribute that rock to that. And they had good reasons to believe it was true because it is. And it was done reluctantly because the rock asked to come in. Now, what's interesting about this rock at first glance, and there's two glances in this one, I can assure you, and then some, is the fact that I'm going to try and hold it up. And I always do a crappy job with this, so bear with me. I'll try and see if I can get it somewhere near the camera. If I hold it like that, oh, God, you might start to see what it is, is a mass. And there's about 70 on this side, and there's quite a few lines cutting on the other side. What's fascinating is it was found in the Pilbara region, region rather, <clears throat> and in that region there were Einstein, iron ore. That's all there is, and this rock is an iron ore. So what has happened is that this particular rock is not natural to that area, but more importantly, the lines on it are the sharpest and straightest, the most geometric lines I've ever seen. And there's one section, one line, and I'll try and hold this up, that runs through the center. It's been cut down and down and down, time after time. One on the side less so, and that goes around the other side, and so does the other one. It stays in a complete line. It's not natural. But the gentleman who sent the rock to us under instructions from that rock made it very clear and so did the miner and this guy is involved in cutting gemstones he said that the blades used to cut this rock really are the one of the first issues involved here they are phenomenal now the reason they're phenomenal is because of the fact that um they don't come from any stick, stone and bone technology. They come from, he claims it has to be nothing less than a diamond head because the final cut, which is still down the bottom, you can see, and it is about, oh, one-tenth of a mil, and it's perfectly straight. Every line is perfectly straight. And that is because of the fact that the lines are perfectly straight because we've used a, a ruler. You can't get 70 lines, every one the same, with no difference whatsoever, unless you've used a ruler to put the line on and then run across. And secondly, it's got to be a blade. And from what this gentleman said, no less than a diamond blade, perhaps laser, something in sound technology would also work, it doesn't matter. But either way, that particular rock, the way it's placed like that, the cuts on it, it is so reminiscent of two other rocks that we've been working with. And those two rocks are Rosa's Rock 1, this one here, which has lines that intersect and cut across. And the same happens on the back, going the wrong way. This one, and also 15, which has the same idea. This is, from what I've been told by everyone, a meteor. And you can see you've got the media parts of this and it's been cut on the top. And if I can get this up on the top, there is, oh boy, I've got to pull back a bit here. Trust me, it's a mass of straight lines running all over the place, which you can barely see because of the fact it's so old. Anyway, <clears throat> here's the trick with those three. They all resonate to the same patterning 
which is lines going straight and across and over time after time after time. Now, the name for these rocks, the rocks we've, we've been working on, we've got two types of rocks and we've got about oh, 160 or 70 in here and some in other positions, which we won't get into. Those rocks, there's two types. There are the rocks that I'm talking about today with this particular one here, or you will see when I hold it up, there's a sort of a chocolate coat on top and then underneath a much lighter colour. And you'll see on the other side again, the same resin, the same thing takes place. There's chocolate on top, then a lighter colour. That's a coat that goes on top and then cut away and it gets back to the rock that's formed up underneath. So that one that was formed up like a scarab beetle, that would have been done first. Then the coat of silica and resin is placed on top and then they do the coating. And in this case, what we've got is absolute proof of an instrument that's never supposed to be in this country yet was found in the Pilbara via miner given to Callan and Priscilla and then passed on to us and that part of this story ladies and gentlemen is part of what we think is a trilogy we think those three rocks complete a story we've been waiting to um put together for quite some time because <clears throat> those three rocks, which are the ones that have the most lines that intersect and cut across and have technology that is difficult to emulate today, together create the same story, we think, at different times. Now, the first rock, and I'll try and hold this a little bit better this time and make a better effort, which is this one over here. You'll see how that rock has just been cut sheer it's a media that's what i'm told anyway i'm not a geologist but that's what other people tell me and you can see how rough it is but on that side there it's been cut perfectly and in it is a narrative now when you turn it over you'll see part of a narrative on this side you'll see another part on the top there once again it's been cut you'll see it there you see you've got your darker chocolate then a lighter chocolate that's on top that's the coating they've put over the top of it on this one up here you'll see another one on the side there and they're on different parts of the rock you can see two sides where part and some's come away now that one i'm not going to go into the reasons why we have this story but irrespective this is the story we've got from the rocks and from elders that one is when the pleiadians seeded the planet at the very beginning and they threw a spear and on that spear was coated the bacteria, the life forms to create life. And when it hit the earth, it landed at a place today where the cap on the top of it is still there, which is the real. And there's a spear underneath that pierced the earth, and then that created life. That is that rock. The second of the three rocks, because I believe this last rock is the third, the second of the third three rocks is a story that was given to us. And that is this rock, and here's the other side of this rock here. That's Ros's rock number one. There's one side where there's one part of this narrative, and on the other side's another part of the narrative, and there's imprints, there's percussion points in there with imprints, and you've got infills on this, all that stuff. That's a different story. And according to Kano, that is a story of the Pleiadians coming here the second time and seeking out some form of hominem to cross their knowledge, their wisdom, their genes, and also to share with them something even more important, is a shared destiny. So they came quite some time ago, and their job basically was to prepare the way for the second part of this story. Now, to begin with, according to Kano, when the Pleiadians came here, they were not welcome and fought against and repelled. So don't assume that we are morons at the time waiting to be enlightened. We have skills they're seeking to, and they learnt from us, from the original people of Australia, because this is where they went. They learnt things from us, from this liaison. But they had to, first of all, get down here. It was only after that battle swayed, because the eagle 
and the crow that were fighting against the goanna, which is the Pleiadians, the crow changed sides and joined in because they knew in the long term there was a good point in this. So anyway, they come down and the goanna that was vanquished was given as part of his defeat, was given something. What he gave was his claws with the eagle then, uh, sorry, the goanna then took the eagle's claws and scratch the laws and the stories of where they came from into this rock here that we're talking about at the moment. So that's the second part of the Pleiadian story. We believe, and I'm not going to go into details about why I'm saying it today, but this one here, this one with another set of straight lines all crossing against one another, is another part of that journey that Uncle Marba calls the. Um, Star Rocks collection, because that's what they chronicle. The beginning and the liaison of two different groups of beings. So what we now have is the third part of that story. And to begin with, that was the whole purpose of the article, to write about this new rock, the fact that the technology is way wrong. It is the straightest rock found that is thousands of years old you'll find anywhere. There isn't one rock that deviates away from the straight. It's geometrically perfect. But, and even on the other side, we've got that scarab beetle on the top, which of course has links to like ancient Egypt, once again, for about the thousandth time in Australia. But even so, past that technology, there's that link that goes back to the Pleiades. Now, that was the intention of this. That's all we're going to write about. Then what happened is towards the end, um, it came back to a prophecy because while it was taking place, I got a phone call from an elder, an incredibly highly respected by me, elder and keeper of the old ways, Brenda Murray from Victoria. Now, he'd given me and told me a story before about the fact that there was a time had come when the Pleiadians had come, and I've spoken about the first two times. And then he spoke about the third time when they were to come again, which is exactly what this rock is about. This is about the third time again. And that's why this rock has turned up now, because I believe it's part of what's taking place in that third time. And he was the one who started by telling me that the original people of Australia, the keepers, and I go through the process of how, had sung the Pleiadians back and they were to return for the third time. And they were to bring some assistance. And I'm not going to go into all the details for that. But that led on to the fact that this place would change in its resonance. It would actually become multi resonated, one at a very high level and one at a low level, and one of those level levels would disappear. <clears throat> that is what this rock is about. I think it's part of that, and I think it's here to assist in that change that may take place when the Pleiadians turn up. And, of course, that's what that article is about. I've spoken about the fact the science isn't right. Now, I've also spoken about the fact that the mythology and the spirituality, spirituality in its appearance being the third of a message, one from the very beginning of life, the second and the changing of life at the sapien hominid level with the input of extraterrestrial genes, not only, of course, Pleiadians, but all the others turned up elsewhere. But there was also the third part of this, which is the completion of this triangle, which is where it all ended up in the finish. And that's where we're up to, and I think that rock is part of that. Okay, so that is extensively what this article is about. And in closing, there's a third part to this. Those three rocks are, for the first time ever, going to be put in formation triangularly as part of what the second day of our presentation is going to involve. Now on the first day, we're going to 
there's four of us and our job is to an extent is to lay out a platform an empirical platform for the second day now the second day i want to talk about first because when we do the rock um workshop it's not actually a workshop it's a decision made by my well the rocks first and myself second is for the first time ever outside this house here i'm going to put them in the sacred formation which we've done ceremony with with original and non-original people now in a place on our farm the rest of the time they're hidden now because i'm staying in country i when i take my rocks we can take say 25 30 k's but we can't take more but because i'm staying on country i can drive the car down we're going to take about 120 rocks and we'll be able to make the complete formation and what we're going to do is i'll set them up in a way while they'll be working beneficially trust me on this but they will be don't worry and when people come in what they'll have to do at the start they can become part of this process under one condition the people who come to the workshop on the second day what i ask they do is that they come in and walk around the figure eight which it will be in and anti-clockwise three times then stand inside the first circle which will be nearly complete but the rock will be taken out that'll be put in after they go out for 10 seconds then stand inside the second then sit down and we'll be sitting in a different arrangement around that particular circle now then what i'm going to offer is for each person while we're doing the talk and presentation and using crystals and rods and all sorts of stuff because it's not going to be quite what you'll think as a presentation it's going to change a fair bit we're going to try and interact with these rocks as much as we can within the two hours two and a bit hours whatever it is will be around that and each person will get the opportunity for five minutes and that means there would actually be um five minutes that means there's 12 24 48 positions because there's two circles for five minutes to sit inside one of those circles under the condition when they get there they get no negative reaction the deal being if you do don't sit there because it's not going to work i can tell you now if that negative reaction could be anything straight away from a headache to a head, uh, chest being uh, crushed to an uneasy feeling the most common one is nosebleeds done that a few times with some of these rocks i can tell you now the deal is this if you feel um, that like it's not working you get out because these rocks if they don't feel comfortable with someone will not react well you've got to make sure of that but i don't think that's going to happen but i'm making that proviso because there is no insurance i know of for metaphysical attacks with any insurance company on the planet so you're walking on your own but i'm just saying because these rocks are sacred but for some reason i've got a pretty good idea why they're going to do this for the first time we're going to do that as part of it so for some of the time if you are accepted i'm sure everyone will be and if one isn't well that's cool it's all right it's not a judgment it's just not working out right so that's the offer and what that means is for those five minutes you can sit there and take in what we're talking about from a different perspective and you'll comply the devices of the rocks but the rocks are set in a way they are there to heal and give um knowledge that's how i set them up so they're not set and there are rocks that harm none of those will be there we've got a few of those don't worry they'll just be put aside except for one that'll be kept inside a metal case and brought out for about one minute and then put away again anyway that's a different part of the presentation so ladies and gentlemen here's the reason why we're doing that you got two hours with the rocks you'll be set up around the rocks and pe and within the rocks during that time you'll be using crystals and rods and stuff like that you'll be allowed to hold the rocks as long as you bring gloves you this will be as close as you're going to get to these rocks before they're put back on country and ram again jerry country which are arranged next year and they stay on the land all the time protected when the process of doing that those that will, this will probably never happen again because i can't carry that many rocks elsewhere because it means our baggage cost goes off the planet i mean you just don't, can't take 70 80 rocks to do a presentation expect to make a profit if you carry it down and back so this is the only and plus we're still on country here, so i can do that 
So, ladies and gentlemen, the reason why that's placed where it is is after that, Brendan and, and, and um, Brendan Murphy is going to do his work with meditation, relaxation, and stuff like that. And a lot of people want to do that. And I would recommend you try that for sure because it's a good way to follow up what you're going to go through with the rocks. What I hope takes place with most of the people there because they will set up, they're set, going to be set up to try and give out things to the people that go near it and within it. So we'll see how that works. It's an experiment we've never done before and I'd love to have a few volunteers in there to go in. And then Brendan to follow. And of course, the day before, what we're trying to do is the first day we're trying to get to the the left hand side to place knock away all the rational stuff by showing you stuff that involves basically a skull that comes from a Pleiadian. And I can absolutely prove that. Rings we've got. We've got two rings. One which is from Atlantis. We can absolutely prove that. And one that just came in a couple of days ago, which isn't with me right now. In fact, I don't know. Hang on for a sec. How's that for being professional? Well, we've got a ring in here at the moment. I'll hold it up to you. There's my finger there, and it's a finger. It's a ring, a uh, ring for the finger. Okay, the Atlantean ring, which I have on at the moment, weighs two kilo, uh, two grams. This weighs seventy-five grams. It's quite difficult to hold up. It's putting pressure on me at the moment. Um, it is the most massive ring ever. I can fit four of my little fingers. This the fingers inside it, and there's still room for a bit more. It's a giant ring. That's just been in for three or four days. We'll be talking about that. And what we're going to be showing you, we're going to be showing you evidence of stuff that's turned up around this country in Australia that shouldn't be here and piecing it together in the first day. And it's going to resonate to the same theme. Not that the Pleiadians did it all, but their genes and their intentions and their greed partnership were part of this. That's what this is going to be about to an extent, the whole presentation. And in the first day, we do a lot of empirical stuff and then we talk about the magic of these two rings. We do go both ways. Then after that, we've got James who's going to talk about the fact that there is so much proof about our extraterrestrial involvement and partnership from all over the place and that so many people know it and present more empirical proof that our story about the Pleiadians is true. Then Leah, Leah's going to talk about her personal experiences with these beings. And I can assure you that sounds particularly challenging that such a person could exist, that that actually can be true. But by that time, we've cleared the path for her to give her truth, which we also know is true. And she'll prove that to you. And we've seen so much proof of that. I'm not going to talk about that now. That's something everyone's got to, pro that's their, her story. And don't worry, she does a wonderful job prosecuting it. And then Brendan finishes off the first day with proof of all the, powers that originally homo sapiens sapiens had we've never been the smartest of all the animals of all the mammals and particularly of all the hominins and denisovans and neanderthals homo heidelbergensis the flat-headed skull we have with a flash shaped head which is 1750 cc all of those hominins have a bigger brain than homo sapiens sapiens but we were the magical ones. And this rings a part of that ancestry, which we're going to talk about. And then the rest of our group on the first day lead on to the second day. We then do the spiritual, the meditative, and the other side of the human equation. Once the rational mind is still, there's no more doubt, than doing the second day where you're looking for doubt, trying to find a way out. Well, you've given up on that. So we're trying to put together something that runs thematically. And I'm just basically saying, when we say it's a rock workshop, it's a ceremony first, and it's a workshop that supplements that ceremony. And we'll be doing different stuff throughout that, more than one occasion where those rocks will be 
well, not the hands on, but there'll be gloves on and we'll use rods and we'll use crystals and we've actually got a few party tricks with the crystal, with the rods particularly, and they will be energised. And we'll see what comes out of it. And for God's sake, I've gone for 24 minutes. It was supposed to be 12. I better stop now before my son kills me. Okay, thanks for putting up with me. But if you get a chance up at Byron, the 28th and 29th, I think it's Thursday and Friday, or Wednesday and Thursday, no, Thursday and Friday, I think. There's a wonderful place up there. And if you go through our booking, you'll find the people there, right, they're brilliant. They're giving us the haul for nothing. And if anyone comes and books through there, you get a 20% discount. And it's 25 acres. And right next to where we're talking, which is only one year old with all the best facilities, there's a tennis court a swimming pool and a trampoline for kids for about 40 kids and it's all in 35 acres and it's right in the middle of Byron. And they're doing that for nothing. So if you get a chance and we're keeping this below 90, well, it's 90 dollars and that includes vegetarian and vegan meals, morning and afternoon tea, lots of breaks in between to relax. That's all included in the 90 dollars and for the first time ever, all the profits are spread equally amongst the five speakers involved in that day. There is no money from the people who are giving us the haul. And Evan is organising the whole thing and he's charging nothing also. So all of the money from this goes to the speakers involved. And if nothing else, that's a worthy cause for all of us because speakers rarely, if ever, Outside Duncan Rose, I don't think I've ever been paid to speak, to speak anywhere. So it does help. So from no other point but the sense of poverty that we experience, wouldn't hurt to come along for no other reason than that. But in the meantime, on that second day, those rocks will be in ceremony. And if you can get up there, um, it could be an interesting day. Never done it before and I'm not sure I'll be doing it again. See what happens. Okay, thanks a lot.